As technology continuously evolves, so does our complex relationship with it. In Your Face Belongs to Us, a secretive startup's quest to end privacy as we know it, New York Times tech reporter Kashmir Hill traces the rise of Clearview AI, a startup claiming to identify anyone based on a single photo and the profound implications this technology holds for our privacy. Joining us now is New York Times tech reporter Kashmir Hill. Kashmir, thank you so much much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Stephanie. So in your book, you dive into the story of Clearview AI and their claim to, quote, identify just about anyone based on a photo. What made you want to dig deeper into the origins of, of this startup and their, their idea? Yeah, so this story started for me a few years back. I got a tip from somebody who had found out about Clearview AI in a public records request. And at that point, no one had heard of it before, no one knew about it, and the company claimed that it had scraped a billion photos from the public web, from social media sites, uh, without people's consent, and developed this facial recognition app that it was secretly selling to police. And they've had a lot of success, right, as, as an app. I mean, you said they're working with police, different police departments. I mean, how did they get that 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 connection? Yeah. So when Clearview AI first started, um, it's 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 kind of led by this guy named Juan Tantat, um, real tech obsessive. And when they first developed this app uh, that could you know look for all the photos of you on the internet, they were just trying to sell it to whoever would pay for it. And it was just kind of coincidence that they got introduced to somebody from the NYPD, and the NYPD was was like, we love this app. And they told other police departments and it just spread like wildfire, according to one of the investors that I interviewed. I, and I guess it, it could be helpful to a police department if they're trying to find someone, they look at that picture and then they're able to identify it, but then what about the rest of us, right? In, you write in the book that the reason the Silicon Valley giants hadn't released their own version of a facial recognition tool to identify strangers wasn't that they couldn't build it, but it was that they were afraid to. Why do you think these larger companies were against releasing similar tools? Well, you know, I, I think that this, this is kind of a superpower, this ability to just take someone's photo and be able to find all this information about them on the internet, to know who they are, to know who their friends are, where they live, where they work. And I think, you know, it's surprising it's not like Facebook and Google, who developed this technology earlier, are known to be super privacy protective companies. But even for them, it was just seen as too dangerous, you know, too risky. And, and, and even though it, it could help a police department, but it could also lead to wrongful arrests. And that's, that's been the case in certain situations, right? What additional potential risks uh, does this technology pose if left unregulated? Yeah, I mean, right now, police are actively using uh, facial recognition technology from Clearview AI and others. As you said, there have been wrongful arrests. And then just, you know, if this technology became more widely available, not just to police, but to all of us, it changes what it means to kind of be in public, your ability to be anonymous, to do something private in a public space, to have a sensitive conversation over dinner, that is, that is threatened in a real way. Threatened and, and frightening as well. So we're talking about Clearview AI. You actually got to speak to them about their, their app and, and, and fact check them as well. What was their response? to all of this and, and to, your, to your findings? Yeah, I mean, originally Clearview AI didn't want to talk to me, but they kind of, I did a lot of, I did a lot of investigating, a lot of pushing, and they came around. I've talked to the CEO, Juan Tantat, many times, and you know, he says that what he's selling is, is has a potential for, for great good in the world. You know, used by police to solve crimes and, and to kind of, possibly just make the world a more accountable place. And it's still, I mean, this has been going on for, for years, but it's still pretty early. I would say that the future is still kind of uncertain. What could people do to become more aware and also to protect themselves and their privacy? Yeah, so right now, depending on where you live, your, your, your privacy is different, your face is differently protected. Um, there are states where you can get your information deleted from face databases like this. If you're in California or Connecticut or Colorado or Virginia, you can actually go to Clearview AI and say, delete my face from your database. Uh, if you live in Illinois, there's a, a law there that protects you. So it, it really does matter what laws your, your state has. Kashmir, thank you so much for this information. Really, really helpful. Your Face Belongs to Us, a secretive startup's quest to end privacy as we know it is now available to purchase wherever books are sold.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.